Michael Bublé is an anomaly in the music world. He's become a star singing old classics from the Great American Songbook, unforgettable jazz standards written more than half a century ago. It's music that was immortalized by the likes of Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and Tony Bennett. But as we discovered, at a Michael Bublé concert, you're as likely to find screaming teenage girls in the audience as you are their grandparents. He started out singing in shopping malls. Today, he can sell out Madison Square Garden. And his Christmas album, out for just six weeks, has already sold over four million copies worldwide. But he freely admits that even after spending more than half his life in the business, he's still fighting for respect. Our story begins backstage on his latest tour, moments before the curtains open. The story will continue in a moment. It's three minutes to showtime. Michael Bublé is about to do a final warm-up as the crowd waits. His fans are drawn to his Rat Pack style, that signature suit and tie, that seductive charm. Well, you can cry me a river, cry me a river. I cried a river over you. This 1953 classic opens his show. It was a smoky ballad written for Ella Fitzgerald but he's given it his own big band sound. You said you love me, but you lie. Am I crazy? How can you not like this stuff? There's a reason why these songs have been sung for a hundred years and that people are still touched by them. I cried a river over you. His talent for breathing new life into old has helped him sell close to 35 million albums. We all know about love, we all know about hurting. These songs connect emotionally to people. So who is in your audience these days? Oh, it's great. I've got uh, young, really young. I've got really old, I've got really gay, I've got very black and very white, really rich and really poor, I've got everybody. Life's a wonderful thing. A Michael Bublé concert takes you back to some of the greatest music of the last century. This is his version of that Frank Sinatra favorite, I've Got the World on a String. Let's go! I've got the world on a string. I'm sitting on a rainbow I got that string around my finger Oh, and what I want, what I like, baby, I am But he's not confined to these jazz standards. Everybody up! He takes his favorite songs from any decade and makes them his own. Here, he's doing Twist and Shout. Well, shake it up, baby, now. Shake it up, baby. Then there are his own original songs. So you want to be a rock star. Like Hollywood, a tongue-in-cheek statement about celebrity culture. But could you be the next sensation? Few artists have the versatility that is Michael Bublé's trademark. I get to study and I got to mimic. And what I basically did was I stole from every person that I could steal from. I was an imitator. That's what I was. I, I, it, it was years before I could take all of these things that I loved about all these different artists and put them together and find my voice. Well, you've paid for that, though, because the, somehow the music industry, in spite of all your success, they still don't accept you fully. It's one of those things where it's hard. What, who am I? It turns out that I'm far too schizophrenic musically for people to categorize me. Don't you know that that line goes way on the right way? I think people judge me a lot before they ever really know who I am. 
He's not a man who takes himself too seriously, as we discovered when Michael gave us a tour backstage in San Jose, California. That's it. He was getting ready for the 150th show of his latest tour. Going on tour is like a, it's like a, a camp, right? Like a summer camp. This is the crappiest interview I've ever done. <laughs> Watch yourself here if there's a bump. Oh, wow, so look, look at that. that. That's fabulous, huh? I mean, I've talked to entertainers. I remember talking to Tony Bennett, and I asked him what advice he could give me, and he said, be nervous before every show. He said, everybody should be a little bit nervous before every show, and I thought, oh, I'm toast, because I just didn't have that. I, 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 I was so comfortable up there. This is, I'm more comfortable there than I am in a, in a room. It's where I was sort of... Meant to My be. personality, who I am, I was meant to be up there. It all started here off the coast of Vancouver. Michael spent much of his time growing up on the water. He's the son of a fisherman. What does it feel like to come back on a fishing boat? How long has it been? Oh, man, it's 15 years, 16 years. For three months every summer, he worked grueling 20-hour days catching and sorting salmon. You were young then. He and his dad, Lewis, showed us around the kind of boat they used to work on together. We would jump in in our rain gear and you'd be up to here and fish, and you'd basically separate um, each of the species. You up to here and fish? Yeah. Not just fish, but beautiful jellyfish and lice and everything else that comes with Slime. slimy fish. This is also where he often dreamed of making it as a singer, listening to his Walkman in his bunk, memorizing hundreds of old classics. I just felt that's how you make something happen. You just, you will it. What would you do? I would just sneak in a room, practice, and grab a hairbrush and go, Well, all the things you think that you pine for, gee, I'd like to see you looking swell. Laura, the only time you hold me is when we're dancing. Michael's passion for swing music came from his grandfather, Mitch, who we met in Vancouver at a Buble family dinner. A plumber and music lover, he introduced Michael to the greats, and they spent years listening to them together. He would say, Sunshine, you know, before I die, I just want you to, to if you could just learn these, these three songs, you know, Begin the Begin, or I'll Never Smile Again. Or, and so I would learn them, and um, he did this countless times, hundreds and hundreds of times. I mean, he's my, probably easily my best friend, yeah. He would call you Sunshine? That's, he still calls me Sunshine. Michael's grandfather used every trick of the trade to get Sunshine's career on its way. He took me to every audition. He took me to every singing lesson. He would get me in by promising to give free plumbing to any club owner who would let me in. And he'd say, listen, I know he's 16, but you let him up on stage, I'm going to go and I'm going to fix your hot water here. It's busted. And then he'd wait all night and I'd get up and I'd have my chance to sing with the band and he'd sat there beaming at me. How old were you when you, you know, first started doing that kind of gig? 16, just turning 17. So 20 years ago? 20 years ago, yeah. <laughs> and it went by, it went by like this. <laughs> it, uh, it was a long road. The first, uh, till I was about 26, was, a, was quite a struggle. You've sung in shopping malls? Many times. Birthday parties? <laughs> sure. Yep, birthday parties, singing telegrams. I sang uh, Christmas songs in the malls. My grandpa would drink about eight cups of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> the poor guy. <laughs> and uh, we'd sit there for five hours. Yeah, I did everything that you could do. Did you have any limits? Was there anything you wouldn't do? I didn't like singing at weddings. But you did it. I did it, yeah. I and did. actually, as it turns out... As it turns out, it's the one thing I did where everyone in the world goes like, Oh, you're the wedding singer that made it. A one, two, three, four. It was at this wedding in September 2000 that Michael's luck changed. Oh, the star One of the guests was Warner Music producer David Foster. He told him he loved his act and invited him to L.A. That should have been Michael's big break, but for the next year and a half, he struggled to convince the skeptical music industry that he was more than a Frank Sinatra wannabe. After begging David Foster, he finally got a meeting with the head of Warner Brothers Records. It was like a movie, and as he sat down, he said, well, Mr. Buble, why should we sign you? We have Sinatra on reprise. And I fired back and said, with all respect, Mr. Sinatra's dead, you know. I said, don't bury the music with him. I, I said, he, he wouldn't want it, no one wants it. I said, there's a void here. And I said, and I'll fill it and I'll work for you. I'll work hard for you. He was sent away without an answer. 
A week later, I was down in the basement uh, of this building that I was staying in, and I was on the treadmill, and uh, the doors flung open, and my grandpa and my manager were there, and uh, they both had tears in their eyes, and uh, my grandpa said, Sunshine, sunshine, you're with Warner Brothers. Maybe surrounded by a million people, I still feel all alone. I want to go home. Today, Michael Bublé yeah, has earned the music home. industry's highest honors, including three Grammys. I've been keeping all the letters. And his first four albums have all gone platinum. This ballad, Home, was his first original hit. I'm fine, baby, how are you? You'll come out of nowhere and into my life. And I know that we can be... Haven't Met You Yet is his favorite. It's a song that Michael says was inspired by this woman, his wife, Luisana Lopelato. I just haven't met you yet. She's an Argentine actress and model, and she knows how to keep Mr. Buble's feet on the ground. We're just going to do a test here. How much out of ten do you love me? Eight. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's been eight since... How long has it been eight? Um, for so long. <laughs> What's no, the real Michael Bublé? Oh, uh, the real? Happy, funny, um, beautiful family. He's so sensitive. And, and, and I I'm, like... And am I also a pain in the bum? Also too. <laughs> Sometimes I want to kill him, but... <laughs> you know, I can. He needs to sing more. <laughs> Christmas. Michael invited us into the recording studio in LA where he was putting the final touches on his latest album simply called Christmas. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas everywhere you go. It's currently the number one album in the country. Silent night. He told us he's always wanted to follow the holiday tradition of those legendary voices that still inspire his career. I want to be around for a long time. I want this to be a career. I want to sing like Tony Bennett. I want to be an old man and I want to go through all the ups and downs and I want to still love what I do. So hang a shining star above the highest A merry little Christmas night. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Go to 60minutesovertime.com to hear more about Michael Bublé's life on and off the road.